Hello everyone, welcome to the Women in Motorsports. Joe San Diego here along with Daniel Series from Racers to Girls Behind the Helmet. And we'll start off with some of the breaking news that came out just about an hour ago from the W Series. The W Series, they're going to be racing in the United States two times this year as their 2022 calendar was released just about an hour ago on their Twitter page. Very exciting. And overall, all the rounds are going to be part of the FIA Formula 1 schedule. Taking a look at the schedule right here, as you can see, the United States will be kicking off the season opening at Miami. That is a brand new race for Formula 1. Then we have Spain. They're returning back to Silverstone. They're going to Paul Ricard, France, the Hungarian ring, and then Suzuka, Japan, that is a fan favorite when it comes to racing. I like to see Amber. That's right, two races in the United States. Because then Austin, Texas again. And the season finale again planned for Mexico. Daniel, I know we've been waiting for this schedule to come out for quite some time. And we finally got it. What is your initial impressions on the schedule? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Joe. And thank you to all our followers. Um, as you as you said, it's it's been uh, uh, quite some time that we have waited for for this calendar, and it's uh, finally out. Um, as expected, W Series continues its partnership with Formula One. Of course, it was very very much expected after the success from last year. Um, the uh, well, the, the the big news is the, uh, the the three races in the American continent, and the very first race in uh, in Asia for W Series. We we've known this for since the very beginning. Of, of the project, I would say that uh, W Series was very, very interested in uh, in going global, and I think this year uh, this is a, a, a huge step in, in that direction. They will have races in three continents. First, uh, Asian race. Uh, we know that still in, in the pandemic, in pandemic times, uh, there's still a lot of a challenge even for for an organization like Formula One. Uh, but yes, Suzuka, uh, very iconic track, and finally. Uh, the Japanese Grand Prix will be back, so it's going to be really, really exciting to have also W Series uh, on the um, on, on the sport bill of, of the uh, Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, the first race is going to be Miami track, which is uh, of course uh, brand new for, for Formula One as well. It's going to host the first, uh, very first uh, um, Miami Grand Prix in a, a circuit specially built uh, around the stadium. Uh, which is currently under construction. It's, it's really, really exciting uh, to, to see also the, the layout of how it's going to be. Um, that's a very interesting question that we have from Amber. SWC has raced on a street course before. Yes, in the fir very first year in 2019, WC has raced at the Norris Ring in Germany, uh, which is kind of the, uh, the, the top race for, on the DTM calendar. Uh, it's a very short track. Uh, I was there for that race. I did the track walk as well. It's, it's a short track. It's like two and a half kilometers long. Um, and uh, the, there are not many corners, uh, mainly hairpins and a fast chicane in the middle sector. Uh, but it was, uh, it, it was it, a very, very good race. Marta Garcia won the race there. Um, it was a, a very, very cool race because uh, with such a short track, the, the, the gaps were all very, very compact. And, and there was, I, I think, if I remember correctly, from first to last on, on the grid, there were something like less than half a second. Uh, so it was a very exciting race. Um, so, yes, it has raced previously on a street circuit, but I think this one is going to be quite different in, in, uh, in both the, the, uh, you know, the characteristics and the features. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see. Uh, w Series racing at Miami. Also, there will there will be uh, two races. Uh, that, well, three races that are coming back. And one is Silverstone, of course, which is kind of considered like the home race for for W Series, which is a British organization. Budapest in Hungary, that is always uh, uh, one of the fan favorite in in uh, the summer in Europe. And then Austin, which really uh, Austin the the uh, a very successful season finale with a lot of fans. Uh, really, uh, for the first time, uh, I, I believe in in, the, in America, um, watching uh, W Series, and of course the uh, the uh, round, the final round in Mexico City that uh, is expected to host the the season finale for the first time this year. Last year it was scheduled uh, to to be the, the final race, but Formula One 
uh, altered its champ its calendar uh, midway to the to the championship, and so WC uh, had to adapt and uh, ultimately decided to go for a double header at, at Cota. Uh, also, similar story for the Fort Ricard Ground in, in France, which uh, was scheduled to to be the first race after for for W Series. Uh, then a kind of change again forced W Series to go. Uh, to Austria and to to have a double header in uh, in Austria, we had it, Austria one and Austria two. Um, so two two rounds that were supposed to be in 2021 that will uh, finally make their debut in uh, in 2022. Uh, four races in in Europe, four races outside of Europe. I think uh, it's a pretty interesting calendar in uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I find it very interesting. As you mentioned, four races in Europe, and then four out and. Suzuka Japan, that is such, for so many race fans, they love that track. It's been away from the calendar to have F1 and W Series going there. I just think that's going to elevate Japan to, okay, we've missed this track. Now that's going to be even more special. Circuits of America, Mexico City, those are going to be great. And especially we saw Austin, that huge crowd for F1. And, of course, they were all there to witness the W Series crowning Jamie Chadwick a two-time champion. It really feels like this is a big effort to get the American market, American fans vested with Miami being a brand new race in the heart of Miami, in the city. Wow, this is going to really, I think, shine a huge spotlight on the W Series, on the female athletes, the racers that are racing in this series. Now, one of the things... Eight rounds. They mentioned eight calendar weekends. We know in Austin, Texas, they did a doubleheader since Mexico, unfortunately, was unable to take place. We've seen a lot of series starting to adapt doubleheaders or sometimes like a sprint race and the Grand Prix. This feels like a doubleheader. Do you anticipate maybe we might see a little bit more? Because I believe in the first season of the W Series, didn't we have a couple of doubleheaders? Uh, well, well spotted, uh, Joe. I think uh, um, we will. Well, this is speculation. Let's say that the the, uh, the official press release from the from the series did not mention double headers, but it did mention uh, that they will host races in eight F1 Grand Prix weekends. So races on eight Grand Prix weekends, which does open a little bit the, the opportunity, you know, to 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 have double headers. And I think this is the direction that we are going. Uh, of course, this is just uh, uh, us reading into between the between the lines, uh, but I, I do think that we will see a double header. So in the first season, as you mentioned, we we had just one double header, uh, which was at the Assen race in, in the Netherlands. Uh, the second race actually was not a championship race; it was a bit more of, a, of an experiment. They uh, they had uh, on Sunday morning a race which with reverse grid. Um, so they, but, but not like most of the championship are doing, like from from the previous race or, or from the, the qualifying order. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, experiment because they, they took the uh, championship standings and they reversed it completely. So the uh, so Jamie Charles, which was uh, leading the championship, started last uh, alongside. Uh, um, I think it was Al uh, Alpha uh, at that point. Um, and, and and the first uh, the first row of the grid was the, the last two drivers. So it was uh, it, it came out a really really exciting race, it was full of action. Uh, if, if someone has not seen this race, I highly highly suggest to to get to, to, to go to the YouTube and, and watch their race because it was, it was a really action packed and very exciting. Uh, we had two double headers last year. Well, it, even though it was uh, the first one in uh, in Austria was not a really double header because it was it was uh, one week after the the, the previous one. Uh, the very first double header for for W Series, the real double header was at Kota, as, as you mentioned. But I do think that we are going to see uh, more uh, more of that this year. More of that this year will be a lot of fun for the fans. I see Amber has a. Very interesting suggestion. Double hitters the same day at daytime and the second one under the lights, a nighttime race. Hey, if the Miami racetrack has lights, I don't see why not. I mean, it's the east coast of the United States, so it could be perfect prime time 
W Series. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I just know I'm really thrilled to hear the W Series is, is out. Of course, they're going to be in the grid ranking for this season, so it's going to be really interesting to follow the W Series. And we definitely encourage everyone, be sure to follow the W Series this year. They're going to be announcing all their drivers coming up. We know we have a new team's format, which is going to be really interesting to see how that develops, how drivers are going to be selected by the teams as well. A lot of development, and we're going to be reporting that right here on the air. And a big shout-out to Joshua Plays, who is also here. Thank you for joining us. We're just wrapping up the top story. The W Series, their 2022 schedule has been released. Two races in the United States. They're kicking off the season in Miami. Then they go to Barcelona, Silverstone, Lacassette, France, Paul Ricard. Then we have Budapest, Hungary, Suzuka, Japan, iconic track. Then back to Austin where we had a huge crowd last year in the doubleheader. And, of course, Mexico City to end off the season. I think it's going to be a very exciting year of racing in the w series and this past weekend we had a very exciting world rally championship season opening race where rally monte carlo came down to the last day when sebastian oj had some bad luck flat tire ruined his day but that gave the win to sebastian Lowe. where to sebastian Lowe's credit he and his co-driver they worked hard drove hard all rally long pushing OJ to the limb. So this wasn't just a fluke. This was a well-deserved win. It was Sebastian Lowe's 80th win. First was Al Citrion, and he is the oldest race winner at Monte Carlo, but the other big historic moment, Isabel Gamish, first female to stand on the top step of the podium in World Rally Championship in 25 years. Now, first time in nine years, a female has been on the podium in World Rally Championship. But for 25 years since the last time the top step, a female racer, stood there. And what's really interesting about Isabel's career, this is her first pro World Rally Championship start. Her and Sebastian Loeb, they pretty much were testing. They got paired up, and sure enough, it really worked out where Isabel guided Sebastian Loeb to victory. And, of course, we know... It has to be a lot where you're talking about a nine-time champion, 79 career wins entering this weekend, having that kind of pressure of guys such a racing icon in World Rally Championship to victory. And this is something we don't talk about often on this program is rally racing just because we focus so much on circuit racing. Daniel, we, when it comes to rally racing, we don't think so much about female races, but we know they're out there. Are you surprised we don't see more females, especially coming up towards World Rally Championship level? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, there are definitely a lot of very good rally drivers. Um, last year, we had uh, a couple of starts from uh, from drivers, uh, you know, on on uh, on WRC platform. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the co-driver uh, that, that won with uh, Loeb uh, in, in Monte Carlo, uh, Isabel Galmiche, but also we had uh, Andy Malkonen winning in WRC3, uh, in another co-driver. Um, we, we had uh, the, the uh, weekend before, we had uh, in a uh, rally in Finland, another female driver, co-driver, sorry, winning the race. So I think... Uh, uh, there definitely are uh, very good ready drivers making their way up to, to into running um, and also a lot of really, really talented co-drivers. Uh, we're just talking less about them because rally, uh, in, in, in my opinion, is going through a difficult period uh, for, for, for its media exposure. I think it, um, apart from, from WRC, but the, all the, the, um, the stepping stones uh, towards WRC, um, they are lacking a little bit of, of exposure, of, of media exposure. So I think uh, this is something that they we will have to work uh, on, on, on that. Um, but on, 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 this, on the way to, to WRC, there definitely are some really talented women 
both in, in, in the uh, driving uh, seat and in the co-driving seat. So this is definitely something that I would like uh, um, to, to discover more and to dedicate more, more time in the near future. You bring up a really good point. But round racing, it's hard for the media because whereas circuit racing, one day, one setting, one race. Rally racing, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know here in the United States, once Speed Vision went off the air, World Rally Championship became really hard to find on regular cable. So a lot of points he bring up there and a couple of comments in the chat room. Joshua Play says, new calendar release and first practice session of Formula E at the same date makes for an awesome day. So definitely very excited to see for game more and more sports going, including the W Series calendar and then W Series on his birthday weekend. Definitely, I think that just completes where you got F1, NASCAR, IndyCar, and W Series. Very, very exciting. We can see him and Amber are chatting it up in the chat room. Encourage everyone in the chat room to be sure to share your comments as well. As we talked about Formula E, one driver I know we're going to talk a little bit about in the future when it comes to Formula E. Had a small role early on from the Middle East, the Alcabasi sisters. Daniel, I know this was their first weekend back in the track for 2022. How did everything go for them this past weekend? Yeah, uh, great uh, great to mention that uh, the Alcobaizi sisters Amna and Hamza um, went to, to, uh, to uh, well, the, their uh, home track in Abu Dhabi for the first round of the uh, Formula 3 Asian Championship, which this year has been rebranded as Formula Regional uh, Asian Championship. Uh, the cars is the same as the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine, uh, which is the same as well as the W Series car. Um, well, so here and there, different different stuff like uh, tires and, and stuff like that. But the, the, the chassis is the same one as the uh, Tattoo's uh, Formula 3 regional car. Um, and Anna uh, is, is coming back to, to Formula 3 uh, after last year because she, she was racing in Italian Formula 4 in 2019. She completely missed the 2020 season, unfortunately, due to the pandemic issues. And she came back to racing in 2021. But she only did very few races in, in the Formula 3 Asian Championship, which was also her Formula 3 debut last year. She, she didn't do that, well, that, that, that bad, considering that she was out of a, of a racing seat for over a year. So I think Anna uh, then ha had another year of, 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 uh, of no racing at all, uh, only a few tests here and there, only at, at the Yacht Marina. Um, and then she was back in, in, the, in the seat uh, last weekend uh, for, for the first race, so it, it, it's not easy for for a you know for a driver to have a schedule like that, especially since the, this year the Formula Region Asian Championship or Formula Three Asia, uh, as you prefer to call it, um, has a, a very very competitive field. It, it is one of the most competitive that we've seen in single seaters in in, in pitted series. Uh, there are drivers literally that will be racing in the FIA Formula 3 uh, this year. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of drivers that are coming from the uh, Formula Regional European Championship. And then all, some of them are also going back to Formula Regional European Championship in Europe. So really, really a very, very competitive field. Um, also, some, some we hadn't seen in the past some, some drivers that went straight into Formula 1, like Nikita Masapi, for example, after doing Formula 3 Asia. Um, so I think uh, it, it's it's a massive challenge for, for a driver like Amna uh, to be out of racing seat for one year and then coming back and, and having to be straight on, on the pace. On the other hand, for, for Hamza, her younger sister, uh, she has been racing in the Italian Formula 4 for in the, in the past two years. Um, she did really, really well. She was the first uh, female driver to, to uh, score points in, in Italian Formula 4. She was the first female driver to, to go on the, uh, to step on the, on the podium, on the overall podium in Italian Formula 4 in, uh, in Lugano last year. Uh, she won six races in the Formula 4 in the UAE, so definitely she is one of the very top female drivers racing worldwide at, in single seaters. And she was making her Formula 3 debut, uh, so that was also something to, to watch. Uh, and I have to say that they both really impressed uh, in, uh, in uh, last weekend. Hamza was P12 uh, in, in race one out of 27 cars. And as I mentioned, 
hugely competitive field. Uh, P12 is kind of a big deal, I would say. Uh, and she she texted me like um, a very few minutes after the race, and and she was not very happy. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Your P12 does a massive debut. She was not happy because she was saying, yeah, but of course I, I could have made it to P10, and that was the that would have been the pole position for the reverse lead race. So that she was a little bit disappointed by that, and that really shows how she's confident to, to, to get into the points very soon. Amna also did very well and was, uh, uh, even though she had a kind of a difficult qualifying on, on, uh, on Friday, uh, she, she recovered to P14 in race one. As I said, that field is, uh, is not easy at all. Um, but race two really was the, the big, uh, big improvement for, uh, for Amna. Uh, she initially uh, crossed the line in P11, which was uh, her best finish in, in, in her Formula 3 career. Um, but then after a post-race um, post disqualification for another driver, uh, she was uh, promoted to P10. So points for, for Anna at the very first, ra first uh, uh, race weekend this year in, in Formula 3 Asian Championship. It was massive. Uh, Amda unfortunately had a retirement due to a technical issue in race two, and her car was uh, not uh, ready yet for for uh, for race three. Uh, she well, she, she she did start the race, but uh, definitely was hampered by some uh, technical issue that uh, she also had in in race two that uh, caused the the retirement in, in the second race. Um, Amna, on the other hand, was protagonist of a massive crash at the at the start. Um, that caused a red flag. Uh, it was a huge shunt, uh, and unfortunately, something that we've seen also in, in Saudi Arabia for, for, for the FIA Formula Two last year, when a car start, is styling on the grid, and unfortunately, some other drivers in behind can't really see in, in, uh, when they're um, you know on, on, at the start, the hectic uh, stage of of the start, and Amna did not see uh, Chembolu Kvasi, who had stolen from the grid, and it was a huge shunt. Amna, luckily, she, she was sent to the uh, medical center and then went to the hospital, to the local hospital for checks. The car was uh, utterly destroyed. Uh, luckily, she was completely fine. Um, I messaged with both her sister and with her uh, on, on, on the same day in the evening after she uh, completed the, the, the checks at the, at the hospital. Nothing broken. Uh, she is perfectly fine, luckily. But a very scary accident, and uh, hopefully she she will be back stronger uh, this weekend because the next race will be at Dubai Autodrome this weekend. Dubai Autodrome this weekend. Definitely will be fine with that. Glad to hear that Anna was okay after that scary, scary incident. Now I know one of the big races this weekend we're going to be following is. The Rolex 24 hours at Daytona this year is going to be massive because literally the largest field ever, 61 cars on the track at Daytona. It's been a long time since we've had such a large field. And out of that, Catherine Legg, the only female racer out of 200 plus racers. I know we talked a little bit about this, about how you have so many racers, but only one female racer, where last year we had even two racers. Definitely, we're hoping to see more female racers. But, of course, Catherine Leg this last weekend, the roar before the 24, starting out the race to see where does everyone will start the 24-hour marathon race. She is in GTD class this year. And GTD, massive field, 22 entries this year. Catherine and her team, they're going to be starting 18th in class. Overall, out of 22 racers, a little bit towards the back. you got 24 hours to work your way towards the front. Anything can happen in this race, especially, as I mentioned, 61 vehicles. When you take that, they're 18th in class. They're going to be starting 56 out of 61. Now, of course, for folks not too familiar with endurance racing, they usually have two starts. You have the prototypes up towards the front, they're going to get the green flag first. Then GTD, GTD Pro, they're going to be sort of a little bit behind, and then they'll get the green flag. So you don't just have 61 cars taking the green flag at once. I think that would be chaos. 
but this race is going to be chaos in general. Of course, those fast LMDH cars, they're going to be going much faster than GTD, GTDH. And the Daytona road course, it's pretty big, 3.25 miles, but concrete walls, those sweeping corners, large throttle times, lap times go there really quickly. It is hard on the car. And one of the things I'm really curious, will the track get really busy? Will we see where the leaders are just consistently dealing with lap traffic time after time, lap after lap? The race is going to start 1.30 p.m. Eastern Saturday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. But before we switch topics, Dan, I have to ask you, when it comes to particularly this race, so many GTD cars in this race, 61 cars in total. Do you believe the Rolex 24 could be a crowded track and potentially opportunities for GTD to move up as so many cars, potentially a lot of full course cautions, a lot of incidents? Yeah, good point. I, I do believe so. Uh, as, as you mentioned, GTD engines would be very, very crowded uh, with 61 cars among the, all the classes. Uh, that, that's going to be busy. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the hard point uh, Porsche where Captain Begg is racing a little bit behind the back, uh, but they had kind of, they had some technical issues in qualifying. So I'm I'm pretty confident that they will uh, try to maximize all the opportunities that they will have. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, also for for potentially some some cautions, early cautions, and, and, and or stuff like that. Yeah, a lot to be cautious about. I see we got a comment. Split starts. Yes, they do utilize the split start at Daytona. So definitely it's going to be something where we're going to be following this race. And of course, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. Saturday morning, grid live pre-race with this for this race, Kobe, Adam Lemmerys, myself, and we're going to have Erin Vogel as well to contribute her sports car expertise for this race. Rolex 24 hours, one of the big races this weekend. And one driver had a big weekend, an upcoming driver, Victoria, out of Russia. Not a lot of people know about this racer. Very young, but this is one of her first attempts outside of karting, correct? Yes, exactly. 15-year-old Victoria Blokina from Russia. Uh, she's been racing in karting, mainly in in Europe. In in, uh, in Italy, she, she had a quite, quite a big... Uh, um, karting career, all racing in all the big uh, karting championships and important ones uh, in the WSK, in WSK, uh, European Karting uh, Championship, FIA World Karting Championship. So, um, very solid karting career for, for Blokina. Uh, she was among the four finalists of the uh, Ferrari Driver Academy uh, supported uh, FIA Girls on Track. So, this is really was her first big. Uh, you know, moment for in her career for, for Blokina, and she is now making her debut in Formula Four. Uh, she's going in the Formula Four UAE Championship. So in uh, in, uh, in the UAE last weekend, she had the very first race in, in single seaters at Abu Dhabi. Um, again, also big field, 27 cars, a uh, lot of really important drivers. All the drivers that will be racing in Italy, in Germany, in UK, in France, and in, in Spain all the very important Formula 4 championships in, in Europe, uh, they went to the UAE this season because the new Tattoos Formula 4 car uh, had the, the, um, you know, the, the worldwide debut in that series. So that car uh, will then be brought to Europe for the, uh, the uh, Italian Formula 4 championship, the German Formula 4 championship, the British Formula 4 championship, and the Spanish Formula 4 championship. So all the important teams and drivers uh, really went to the UAE to do that series to try to you know to to, to get up to up to speed with the new car and Blokina among them uh, Blokina will race in the Italian Championship uh, last weekend had her very first race in, in single seaters big field important drivers important teams she had her very first top twenty P seventeen at the at the at the, um, at, at the checkered flag. Unfortunately, she had a five-second penalty after the race for a contact with another driver on the final corner, where she, she was fighting for position. They unfortunately made contact, and and uh, the other driver had the worst out of it. Um, she, had, she had that unfortunate um, penalty, and which down, you know, she she was down to P19, still top 20. First weekend, I think that is a massive achievement. 
uh, I, I would say uh, to to uh, keep an eye on our website because we have an, an interview coming up from with, with Victoria, uh, and this weekend she will race at Dubai for for her very second time in Formula Four Championship, and we are really looking forward to see her back in, in Europe when she will race in, in Italy. Definitely, I think it's going to be very exciting to follow her. And as you mentioned, be sure to follow your website. We encourage everyone to be sure to follow the website, racersbehindthehelmet.com. There you can get a full following of all the upcoming races. I see there the W Series calendar made it up there. Ericsson from IMSA. And, of course, you go to the calendar. You can see all the upcoming races for the weekend. And all the female racers. So we highly encourage everyone to be sure to utilize the website racersbehindthehelmet.com. We want to thank everyone for tuning in to today's program. Be sure to sign up for our Patreon like Colin, Dichelle, Mark, and Robin. They're investing in the grid network. They're keeping us on the air. Big thank you to them. Social media. We're releasing the pick a winner. If you missed grid tonight, yesterday, pick a winner for the Rolex 24 and Formula E. And on the grid tonight, there is a link to the Formula E Wheel of Destiny. Check it out. And, of course, if you want to do a one-time donation, you could do Buy Me a Coffee, where you could even buy a grid network on-air person a cup of coffee. It would be greatly appreciated. And we encourage everyone, check out our sponsor, public.com. You get $5 in stocks if you use the referral code GRIDNET. The stock market social media homepage. And now there is crypto. Definitely a lot of opportunities there for everyone. And we definitely want to give a big thank you for Daniel Zeri for being on the air with us on the Women in Motorsports. For Daniel Zeri, I'm Joe San Diego. Thank you for watching today's show. We'll see you next time. Don't be an anonymous investor. Join the stock market social media platform, public.com. Invest any amount of money and share with friends and new friends. Discover new opportunities such as new companies and potential business partners, and useful tools for beginners and share your experience with friends on public.com. Link in the video description gets you $5 for being a Grid Network viewer. Use the referral code GRIDNET for your free $5 to invest. Start investing and networking on public.com.